Hello, I'm Jennifer Fugate, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Along with my colleague Alejandra Ravenstein, I'm pleased to present our article titled Update on Intravenous Recombinant Tissue Plasminogen Activator for Acute Ischemic Stroke. This review article will appear in the upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Intravenous tissue plasminogen activator, or IVTPA, is the only effective treatment for acute ischemic stroke. The field of interventional stroke neurology, or endovascular neurology, shows a lot of promise, but no endovascular therapy has been proven to be superior to IVTPA alone. In this article, we review the literature, we summarize the evidence supporting the use of IVTPA over the last two decades, beginning with the landmark trial of the NINDS stroke trial. The results of many subsequent studies to this, including both observational studies as well as further randomized trials, have supported and verified the safety and efficacy of IVTPA on an international basis. The results of these studies and trials are compared in our review article, along with a bar graph depicting the differences in outcomes between each study. In addition to reviewing the evidence, we highlight patient selection for treatment with IVTPA and the practicalities of thrombolytic and post-thrombolytic care. The rapid assessment and early treatment of stroke patients cannot be stressed enough. It's very well established that the earlier you give IVTPA, the more effective it is. Unfortunately, only a minority of stroke patients present within the time window to get TPA. And while the therapeutic window has been lengthened from three hours to four and a half hours for most patients, it's still important to stress that the earlier it's given, the better. Delays thus should be minimized. Only a few diagnostic tests are necessary before giving IVTPA for most patients. Non-contrast head CT, of course, is needed to exclude hemorrhage, and to exclude large areas of established infarction. Clinicians in general do not need to await results of extensive laboratory testing. In fact, only a blood glucose is recommended for most patients by the American Heart and Stroke Associations prior to proceeding. Thus, the results of coagulation studies are not needed unless the patient is known to be anticoagulated, suspected to be anticoagulated, thrombocytopenic, have a history of liver disease, or other hematologic or bleeding diatheses. In the article, we review the contraindications to administering TPA, and it's worthwhile to note that a fear of misdiagnosis of a stroke mimic should not preclude the administration of IV TPA. The risk of symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage in those circumstances, which is the most feared complication, is extraordinarily low, and the consequences of missing the opportunity to treat a stroke patient could be devastating. Some of the historical contraindications for giving IV TPA, such as seizure at onset or resolving stroke symptoms, are no longer considered absolute contraindications to giving IV TPA if there are still potentially disabling deficits present. In our article, we also discuss factors predictive of outcome, with the three most important being time to treatment, age, and stroke severity. Finally, we review potential complications, and you will find an empirical algorithm to help guide evaluation and management of possible intracranial hemorrhage, which is only symptomatic in about 2-6% to 6 of all patients receiving IV TPA. And an era of advancing technologies has already brought the stroke community new possibilities, such as the use of telemedicine to smaller community hospitals, advanced brain imaging techniques, which could refine our selection of optimal candidates, Alternative fibrinolytics, such as tenecteplase, adjuvant treatment with IV antiplatelet therapy, and endovascular mechanical embolectomy procedures are all ongoing subjects of future research and hold great potential. So what does this mean for patients? Education regarding stroke symptoms, the necessity of calling for emergency medical assistance as soon as possible, is extremely important so that evaluation can be done quickly and IV TPA can be given as quickly as possible. For now, IV TPA remains the standard of practice and is the only proven acute therapy for acute stroke. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel 
or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about health care at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.